Hi, Chris Monterra here at EMS World Expo 2012 in New Orleans, and we're here at the Physio Podcast Studio with Dr. Paul Banerjee. Hello, sir. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. So, Paul, Dr. Can Paul or Dr. Paul. Banerjee, Paul. Which, which do you prefer? Okay. Um, uh, tell us who you are and where you're from and what do you do? I'm a medical director of Lake EMS. Um, I've been there for five years, and we've basically trying to just basically uh, get our cardiac arrest data to be uh, as accurate and as um, good as possible, We're trying to optimize survival rates. Um, and it's really great to be here and meet, be with Chris. Chris is kind of my hero. He won the award last year, so uh, he's kind of my role model, and I want to be, kind of become and uh, achieve levels like he did. But tell me a little bit about the science behind what you're doing. We had talked a little bit about um, the idea of doing stack shocks and, and what kind of success rate you've had, but it's more than just shocking and, and getting rid of innovation. There's, uh, there's a whole science behind that. Briefly describe that for me. Uh, what it do is it's basically change the culture of cardiac arrest. Uh, what we're doing for cardiac arrest, we're doing non-rebreathers, we're doing continuous CPR. Uh, if you have to intubate and you need an airway, you get a king tube. Uh, the goal is to minimize time off the chest. We want a CPR fraction to be about 90%, um, and basically our results have been really good. Uh, our Utstein VFib ROSCs are at 71%, um, and our overall uh, VFib ROSCs for the compression only is about 69%. So numbers are really good. Um, our therapeutic hypothermia results from last year, our VFib survival to discharge of 54%. Um, our overall survival discharge is 26%. We really want to incorporate everybody. We had 18% of PEAs and asystole go home neurologically intact. These are things that most people don't track because the numbers look bad. Um, and it's not about the numbers, it's about doing the right thing for the patient. So we really want to go out of our way to give everyone a chance to survive. We give them every tool possible, maximize times on the chest. We take away the airway ability, which is kind of frustrating for the medics because they feel like I'm taking away a skill that they, they're, that they've, this has been their, their pride and joy and I'm taking it away. But we had 42,000 calls last year. We had 350 cardiac arrests. I just took it away for the 350 cardiac arrests. And bottom line, we're here for the patient. We're not here for our own ego and self. And results have been pretty good. And I'm very proud of what the job that they've done. That's excellent. And so you were also saying that when you do the stack shocks, you do 360, 360, 360, and then 720. How do you achieve 720 out of a machine that only goes to 360? Well, what we did was there's a thing called refractory ventricular fibrillation, and there's shock-resistant ventricular fibrillation. The definition is that if you have three shocks that fail at 360 joules or whatever joules you start off with, that's refractory or shock-resistant V-fib. 20% of patients have that. With the 20% of patients, if you continue along the same path, you're doing them no service, and they're going to die. So if you did study the physiology of cardiac arrest in medicine, it's the amount of current you inject through a person is the ability to re redirect or correct an arrhythmia and make it from unstable to stable. So the, the equation is current is equals voltage over impedance. Impedance is body habitus, status, whatever, and that's not really going to vary a lot. But what you can vary to increase your current is your voltage. So after three failures, which is basically the definition of refractory VFib or shock-resistant VFib, we double the dose to 720. So we put two monitors on. We put the pads on the front and back. We put them on the side and the lateral part of the chest. So I think it's a component of multiple vectors. I think the more vectors you have to defibrillate the heart, that makes a big difference. I think the voltage makes a big difference. Um, and our results have been pretty good. We've had about 50%, 46%, I think, actually, the VFib ROSC at 720, of which about 80% of those people actually walked home neurologically intact, which is really the goal of what we're trying to do. And so I'm very proud of the work we've done there. That's very cool. That, I, that blows me away. So you always thought of them as just mostly dead, not all dead. Yeah. So <laughs> and I think what we do is basically, you know, it's hard to change. People don't want to change because change is difficult. I got to relearn something. Obviously, I do something wrong. But in medicine, you, only, you learn by your mistakes. And that's why we try to track everything. We track our bystander CPR rate, we track our VFib, we track our PEA, because we can only get better when we have all the information. You know, interestingly, only like 40 cities or 40 areas in the country track and document their VFib ROSCs and the ROSC rates. Well, the reason is because the numbers are pretty bad. So unless, unless you're willing to accept failure and let, look at it and re-examine and see how you can exchange things and, and improve, you're never going to get better. So. You can start with a baseline, no matter how low it is. You can exceed your expectations, because if you're really bad, you can only get better. Well, sir, thank you so much. Thanks for the research you're doing on this, and 
uh, probably and challenging innovation. And I think that uh, you'll probably be an EMS 10 award winner soon enough. So just on the work you're doing, I, I'm very, very impressed. And I think what it does for our industry and it, what it does for us as um, providers. I, I remember when I started in this industry, we, you know, we, um, you had a person standing over you with a gun, making sure you were doing compressions right. And I think we've gone back to that because we've seen how how vitally important that is. So, thank you, Paul, and uh, thank you for all the work that you're doing in that. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And uh, what we're doing with Lake County is we're, we're trying to implement it called Take Three. We want to make it simple as possible. With sudden cardiac arrest, 60% of them are witnessed. The way you can improve survival is you educate the public. So with Take Three, there's three things you need to do: keep it simple, call 911 start chest compressions and get an AED if you have one. That's the only three things you need to do. Um, and just make it simple, give them something. We're doing a lot of community classes. We have a lot of elderly people. We can educate them, they can make a big difference and hopefully affect the lives of people. And thank you so much for everything. Very cool. So Paul, where can people find out more information about your program or about this, uh, this idea in general? Um, well, I'm at lakeems.org. Uh, my email is pbanerjee, B-A-N-E-R-J-E-E at lakeems.org. Feel free to email me. We'll be happy to t teach, present, uh, provide any information you need. You know, whatever we can do to help, we're more than willing to do so. Great. Well, thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. And thank you for joining us at the Physio Control Podcast Studio here at EMS World Expo 2012.